Once again, it's time for questions and answers. This is where you ask questions on the YouTube videos and I will answer them here. So anytime you want to do this, just go on to any video, just ask a short question about space and astronomy. Short ones are best. I can't really answer the long essays and theories, but if you've got a sentence or two, that's perfect and I'll answer them here. All right, let's get going. James Craver. Following up on the telescope question, I have a 5 inch scope. What objects am I limited to? Also, for travel, what would I be limited to with just a pair of binoculars? A 5 inch telescope is still a very respectable telescope and it's going to let you see bright objects in the sky. You're going to be able to see the moon, you're going to be able to see the planets, you're going to be able to see the rings of Saturn, you're going to be able to, with a, with a filter you can see the sun and you can see some of the really nice bright star clusters in the sky. You're not going to be able to see some of those dimmer objects like the nebulae or the galaxies. They're not going to look very good uh, but with binoculars you know take as big a pair of binoculars as you can fit into your suitcase. I've got a pair of, of 15 by 75s and they're great and they're really it's just a total pleasure to use. You can look up in the sky. There's something really magical about having both eyes working in tandem. It kind of makes this, this 3D view of the night sky that you just don't see with the telescope. So I always recommend to people if they want to get started, get a pair of binoculars. You can spend $100 and it will take you so far. The last billionaire. Why are black holes black? Well, black holes aren't actually black. It's just that black holes are absorbing all of the electromagnetic radiation that is coming off of them. All of the blue light, all of the red light, all of the radio waves, all of the gamma radiation, all of the colors, all the light that would be coming is being absorbed by the black hole out to the event horizon. And then outside of that, you've got whatever is coming in is getting either perturbed by the event horizon, getting distorted. So it's not that a black hole is black, it's just that a black hole is absorbing all the radiation and so since there's no radiation coming from it, it looks like this black spot in the sky. Desdradaril XD. Can a planet be shaped like a cube or a disk? There's a thing in astronomy called hydrostatic equilibrium. This is where the gravity of an object wants to pull it into a sphere. And you get that when the object is a certain size, bigger than the moon, the Earth's moon, or, or you know, bigger than that. That's when you get, no matter kind of what the thing is made of, it pulls itself into a sphere. Now you can have a smaller object like say uh, Iapetus, the moon of Saturn, where it's like the shape of a walnut because something happened to it a long time ago and the, it doesn't have enough gravity to turn itself back into that perfect sphere, though it's sort of a, you know, it's walnut shapes close. So in general, any large object, it's going to be spherical. Now you could get something that's more disk-like if it's, if it's rapidly rotating. In fact, the Earth is what's called an oblate spheroid because it's actually, because it rotates so quickly, it's flattened and it's, so it's wider at the poles than it is, so it's wider at the equator than it is from pole to pole. And so you could imagine spinning up the Earth faster and faster and faster and it would flatten out and flatten and flatten out and then it would just tear itself apart. So really, everything is going to be a sphere or some flattened, slightly flattened version of a sphere. Joe the Pro 36, if you could go with a mission to colonize Mars, would you do it? No, I really like Earth, so I don't think I would want to help colonize Mars. Now, I'm super inspired by the people that want to do that and it's one of the greatest adventures that you can imagine in all of humanity and more power to them and I'm sure they're gonna have a really good time. It's kind of like the people who who want to go and get some plot of land in the middle of the forest and build their own cabin and hunt their own food and grow all their own vegetables. Like, the, go ahead. It's I like internet and I like warmth and I like all of the modern convenience. So, and I will cheer you on and I will report on your news. Now, I would love to visit Mars so once it's been colonized and there's regular trips to and from Mars. I will totally take a trip to Mars as long as I get to come back home. John Schneider. Could the James Webb Telescope explore beyond the universe? Nothing can explore beyond the observable universe. That's sort of what the term is. The universe or the observable universe is the region that we can observe. And this is this 13.8 billion light years in all directions is the, the amount of light that we can observe. Beyond that is the 
cosmic microwave background radiation, the afterglow of the Big Bang, and after that is the Big Bang, the beginning of the universe in all directions. So we just can't go beyond that. James Webb is going to be the most powerful telescope that's ever put into space. It's going to be able to observe right to the edge of the observable universe and show us things that we've never seen before, but it can't go beyond that. True astronomy. If all the galaxies in the local group merge into Milkdromeda, then what would it be gravitationally bound to? Nothing? We've got all these galaxies in the local group and even in the Virgo supercluster. Let's imagine the local group. They're all going to eventually come together because they're gravitationally bound to each other. They're going to form some large galaxy. And whatever can come together in the Virgo supercluster is going to come together. But beyond that, the expansion of the universe is going to carry other galaxies away from us faster than they're being attracted by the force of gravity into this cluster. So you're going to get some point in the distant, distant universe when all of the material that could have been attracted to our group of galaxies has been attracted, and everything else is expanding away from us thanks to dark energy and just the expansion of the universe, and they'll be gone forever. So that's sort of what the future is. We're in this sort of special time when you think about it where everything hasn't been attracted and accumulated into these mega galaxies yet, that there are still separate and distinct spiral galaxies and they're still spinning around each other. It's pretty amazing to think that here we are a mere 13.8 billion years after the Big Bang when the, f the future is going to be trillions and quadrillions and Google years into our future and how different and how much more boring the universe is going to look that far into the future. Komatsu Kyoto. What country do you think will be the next big name in the space race? Canada has a space program? I'll answer that in reverse order. Yes, Canada has a space program. The Canada Arm. Commander Chris Hadfield. We've got a fantastic, very small, but real space agency. Yes, Canadian space agency. Look it up. It's a real thing. Uh, who's going to be the next big name in the space race? It's, it's going to be China. Right? They have already launched two space stations now. They've got their second Tiangong space station with astronauts or taikonauts on board. They've said that they're planning to put people on the moon at some point, and I believe them. Uh, so I think that, that it's really going to be a race between the United States and international collaborators and what the Chinese do. And in my perfect world, the Chinese and the, and the rest of the international community would all gather together. Why have a space race when you can work as a collaboration and do this together? Space belongs to all of us. Charles Hard. If we in the future discover that Mars is a completely dead planet and has never harbored life, could we rule out panspermia as the origin of life on Earth? Ruling out life on Mars is very, very difficult to do. You would have to look into every single nook and cranny, every part of the entire planet. Now, we cannot have discovered life so far, but we can't know that there is no life or that there was never life there. It might have just been super rare in various hidden pockets of the planet. But even if we don't find life on Mars, life could have come from somewhere else. <clears throat> Maybe it was formed in the volcanic vents on Enceladus or in Europa. Or maybe it came from outside of the solar system entirely. So we can kind of never rule out panspermia until we figure out the origin of life on Earth. Nate Crawl. So do satellites in the ISS rotate too? Satellites rotate if they need to. Some satellites rotate. Some keep a position of the same spot on, towards the Earth. And others keep a fixed spot into space and others turn depending on if they're, they need to make observations. So you can think about, say, uh, some kind of telecommunication satellite that's in geostationary orbit. It is perched directly above a specific spot on the Earth, and it's going to keep that same spot for its entire orbit all the way around the Earth. And the Earth is turning at the same time. While, say, the Hubble Space Telescope, it's going to have gyros on it that will allow it to change its orientation to observe this object and then to turn and observe that object and so on. So, so whether or not the satellite rotates just depends on what its purpose is. Rydus Kalinowskis, can a spacecraft have its own artificial magnetic field in order to protect astronauts from solar wind? 
This is one of the ideas actually that NASA has investigated is can we build some kind of artificial magnetic field that will protect the astronauts from, from all of the radiation in space? And the answer is probably not. It's really sort of expensive power-wise to try and generate a magnetic field and to create one that's big enough to protect the astronauts doesn't look like it's super feasible. But we're actually going to do a whole episode on this idea and other ways to protect us from space radiation, so stay tuned. Henry Sims, how tall would Martian trees grow on a terraformed Mars? The gravity on Mars is 38% the gravity of Earth, which means that a tree could grow about 2.6 times taller in the lower gravity of Mars than it could on Earth. Now, I don't know whether they could, they could actually get wide enough to support the, that height, but you can imagine a tree growing uh, say the tallest redwood trees are about 100 meters tall, so you could imagine a tree on Mars being 260 meters tall, which is close to 750 feet. It's kind of amazing. It'd be huge trees on, on Mars, even taller if you imagine they grew, say, on the moon, where it's like 15% the force of gravity is what it is on Earth. Hello, 4022. What would it take to weaponize asteroids? For example, direct them to hit a certain country, etc. It's just math and really good propulsion ability. So you, because the asteroids are just going around and around in space, and some of them cross the path of the Earth. And so if you can change the orbit of an asteroid to make it have a higher orbit, a slow, lower orbit, go faster or slower, you can have that orbit intersect with the Earth at the time when the Earth is passing through that area, and you can have that asteroid strike the planet. Can you make it hit a certain country? Well, you've just got to time things up perfectly so that it hits the Earth when a certain country is facing where the asteroid strike is happening. I mean, it's utterly possible, and when we you know, we become a spacefaring civilization. In that episode, we talked about all the good things, like oh, how we're going to live there and how we're going to move goods from world to world and how we're going to redirect asteroids into safer places. But you can redirect asteroids into more dangerous places. You can turn them into weapons. Thanks for all your questions. That was awesome. Keep them coming. So if you just did the math, I haven't done the math exactly, the trees could grow, uh, 38% <coughs> taller than what they would, or let me think, let me do that again, let me get a calculator. 